Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County, Georgia. And joining me now is Cobb and Douglas Public Health's Dr. Janet Meemark, the Health Director. Dr. Meemark, thank you so much for joining us for this month's COVID-19 update. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. So, you know, it's March. It's, excuse me, it's October 7th. 2020, my goodness, it's been such a long year, as you could imagine. Uh, <laughs> October 7th, 2020, right now. So what's going on in Douglas County? Where are we with the numbers? Yeah, so right now we're just over 3,700 cases of COVID-19, and we've had 424 hospitalizations, and we've had 69 deaths. Um, I know it was recorded as 71 earlier, but that's kind of an example of um, how sometimes the uh, um, numbers can be shifted. We find out that they lived in another county, and so we moved them over. So, um, so we're currently at 69, um, 69 deaths. And um, one of the things I did want to talk to folks about was that you all remember that we were kind of in our early. Um, 100 and maybe about 118 cases per 100,000. Um, probably around the last time we talked, we were doing pretty good with that, right? It's, it was still high, but it was um, able to be contained. So we can test appropriately, we can case investigate, contact trace, and keep um, keep the uh, disease kind of um, contained, right? Um, but you know, over the last um, week or so, we've had a little bit of an increase in our numbers to 142 cases per 100,000. Now. In it's just a little bit of a creep up, but it's, it's moving in the wrong direction, right? And so that's something that we're keeping an eye on. But also the um, percentage rate um, that's coming back positive is also a little higher. And so these two things in combination kind of make us take a pause. And that's why I wanted to come and talk to you today. That was very important to let everybody know that we are seeing a rise in numbers. And so we had to make sure that we don't let off the gas pedal in what we're doing, because we all know what we have to do for this. But I know we're all so tired and COVID, we have COVID fatigue, it's real and everybody wants to get back to their lives, but we have a new normal and we really got to, please don't let up because if we do, we're going to see an explosion of cases. And so please, we have to continue to wear our masks and to wash our hands and to um, keep our distance, but please avoid crowds. We are seeing a significant number of outbreaks that are happening and um, they're in athletic um, clubs and athletic um, you know, teams. We're seeing them in churches and we're seeing in lots of businesses. So please, 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 everybody stay vigilant and let's try to get this number going back in the right direction. Back to me, Mark. Where does Wellstar Douglas Hospital stand right now? So Wells Fargo Douglas Hospital is very busy right now. Um, the COVID numbers are, are, you know, not too bad, but it's a generally it's just busy in, in all of their um, different areas. And so um, the hospitals usually remain pretty busy. Um, we're not seeing a whole lot of flu activity yet, which is good, and um, a steady kind of stream of COVID activity. But they are quite busy at this time. Great. One question on a lot of people's minds right now is how can someone as protected from COVID-19 as President Trump has been, with everyone around him being constantly tested and et cetera, catch the virus? Yeah, so that's a great question. I've been asked this question multiple times. And so um, it's great that we go ahead and address it. So I, I think that when we, we have some of these measures in place that we try to replace the preventative measures that we know that work, like the, the mass and social distancing and things like that, if we try to replace those with testing, you can run into a little bit of a problem, right? So remember, the test is only as good as, as it is that moment. And sometimes, you know, if you don't get the right spec, specimen or enough specimen, it can come back falsely negative. And so I think that's what we're kind of seeing is that people who um, have gotten tested, you know, you can develop symptoms or get the virus afterwards. And so, you know, if you think that you're, everybody is negative and then you come in and you all congregate together with no mask and, and not being spread apart, then um, you definitely have a chance of catching the virus. So we, what we know that works is wearing those masks and, and spreading apart. Now, what was um, a little bit concerning is 
is that there seems to be some activity on that Saturday in the Rose Garden. Um, and so what was a little concerning about that was it was outdoors. It was outside, but people were very closely sitting together and they were not wearing masks. And so um, I just want to make sure everybody knew that, you know, to not have a false sense of security in this, um, you, we definitely need to do what we know works right now, which is to, to wear those masks, wash your hands, socially distance, avoid crowds, and please get your flu shot. Absolutely. You know, what do you expect now that we're in October, October 7th? Can you talk about 19? And as you just mentioned moments ago, the flu season is, is, is upon us. Could people get both at the same time if they don't get a flu shot? How problematic could that be? Yeah, so that is one of the, the biggest concerns that we worry about is having two um, potentially lethal viruses that are circulating at the same time. And so um, it is definitely a concern, especially with hospitals being as busy as they are right now. So you can imagine if we get a second spike of COVID and then we get a spike of flu and what that would look like for our area hospitals. So it's definitely a concern. And um, you know, we know that the COVID vaccine is on the way, but it, it's going to take months for that to be circulated. We have just recently found out that the first batch, which will be a small batch of the COVID-19 vaccine, will be allocated to healthcare workers and to um, nursing home, extended um, care type of places and their um, staff first. It's going to be a small batch, and we don't even know the numbers yet. And then they will go down and, and look at the next priorities for um, for administering the vaccine. But that's going to take a while, right? So we, we only have that first batch that they're talking about, and they don't even know. It's not even ready yet. Um, what you do have some protection against is the flu. Now, we know it's not 100%, but what we do know is that it is very, very good against protecting you from dying from influenza. And that is some significant coverage. So what we're asking everybody to do right now is to get that flu shot as soon as you can. Go wherever you can to get it done, and that will help in that situation. Another thing, too, is a lot of people have held off their medical care because of COVID-19. Um, the hospital are telling us that they are seeing not as much COVID, but they're seeing people who delayed their care for other reasons. So please, you know, hospitals are taking taking their precautions. If you have significant medical issues and um, that need to be taken care of, do not avoid going to your doctor or to the emergency room if you need to. Please get those things taken care of. Got you. You know, something on our minds of many people, including myself, and I tell you, as a parent of two students, uh, how are the Douglas County schools doing in regards to COVID-19 since reopening for in-person um, school class? Yeah, so, you know, um, we've talked about this previously that um, the Douglas County Schools put a lot of planning in place. And um, when I talk with the superintendent, his class sizes are not, you know, to capacity, which is a very good thing. They have reduced class sizes and he put a lot of different measures in place to protect children. And so um, we, you know, of course, we do see cases, you know, just like any other school or business, we do see some cases, but it does not seem to be widespread outbreaks. Um, I took a look at the numbers over the last two weeks of cases because I wanted to see if there was anywhere that um, was accounting for the kind of the small increase in numbers that we were seeing. And um, I was thinking it might be the school children, but actually it wasn't. And so what we saw was it's still adults that are getting it. So, you know, between the 30 and, and 55 years old, that made up a lot of the cases. And so, um, you know, it's just staying vigilant and making sure that you're, you know, doing what you need to do. I know that you know people need to go out and work and um, but trying to keep as safe as best you can by wearing the mask and, and keeping some distance from folks. Mm. Thank you. I've been reading about antigen testing in the news. What can you tell us about it? Yeah, so, um, and I got a great question earlier about this. We're like, what, what are antigens? <laughs> and I didn't even, you know, sometimes you forget to explain these things. So, you know, the, the um, gold standard test that we have right now is the PCR testing, right? And that's a um, polymerase um, chain reaction. That's the gold standard. It looks at viral fragments um, and um, in the specimen, right? And so, um, 
so you're looking at little pieces of virus. An antigen is actually um, part of your immune response to COVID-19. And so the thought is that when you are acutely infected, that you will have antigens in your blood or saliva that's circulating. And that's what it's looking for. And so when we get an antigen test, there are different ones. There are some 15-minute ones. There are some from the blood, some from saliva that can be done. 15-minute, 30-minute, there are different ones that can be done. Now, it, it's not a perfect test. So we always have to remember that. It's more effective if you are symptomatic, first of all. So if you get a positive, that is considered a positive and infectious for COVID-19. And so one, I wanted everybody to know was that that has to be reported. So um, we have to be able to find the contacts and the person has to be um, isolated at home if it comes back positive. And so um, we're seeing a little bit of trouble that people are not reporting those and putting other people at risk. And so please, if you have an antigen that is positive, please give us a call so we can um, take the appropriate steps. So Dr. Mirar, I can't thank you enough. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the residents of Douglas County at this time? You know, just um, I, I know everybody is tired of this and I am too, but let's just keep going. And, you know, please remember to wear your mask and to, you know, look around your surroundings. And, and, and you know, people, it's, a lot of it's happening in social areas and where people are congregating that we're seeing spread. So please um, help us to help our community in that way. And and when you're planning for your, your holidays, please keep that in mind too, okay, that, um, you know, we want to protect our, our vulnerable. Um, parents and families and so making sure that you know before you gather that maybe you get tested or that you um, take into some precautions that people kind of put their own little COVID bu bubbles and quarantine a little bit before you go and see mom and stuff just being as safe as you possibly can so that we don't get people sick. Dr. Meemark I can't thank you enough for joining us. Thank you so much for being here today and uh, look forward to seeing you next time okay. See you soon thanks Rick.